Very warm greetings in the blessed name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let us turn to Joshua chapter 11. Joshua chapter 11. Just two verses. And in these two verses, it is obvious that it is about the Anakims. The Anakims. What happened to them, what Joshua did to them. Why the record of this? Now look at verse 21. At that time came Joshua and cut off the Anakims. At that time. This was the time of the wars, the battles. And God tells us during this time of battle, he wanted to highlight the Anakims. Well, there were many other people, but this was called out at the end of the mention of all the battles that Joshua and the people fought. Why? Why? Now, sometimes in life, we say many things, and then we leave. We leave the so-called punch, right, at the end of it. Whether we're telling a joke or trying to bring a, bring a point across, some of the things we want to emphasize, we leave it to the end and then the punchline comes, right? This was mentioned at the end. After describing all the battles, in the midst of all the battles, God says, please remember the Anakims. We want to learn why. Why did God want to use Joshua to bring this punchline across? After this, there is the giving out of the land, the dividing of the land. No more mention of great battles and so on. In fact, you look at verse 23. The land rested from war. From now onwards, it's not about battles anymore. It's about dividing the land that they conquered through these battles. So right at the end of record of battles, God brought this up. Why? 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 That's the first thing we want to learn. The second thing then, therefore, what are the lessons for us? Because this is a punchline at the end, purposely mentioned, pulled out. Now here, it is obviously, like I said, about the Anakims. The Anakims from the mountains, the Anakims from the various places. And notice in verse 21, they were destroyed utterly. They were destroyed utterly by Joshua. Utterly means it was a great destruction, totally crippling them, crippling the Anakims. Not only that, with their cities, at the end of verse 21. Verse 22, emphasize it again. There was none of the Anakims left. Again, an emphasis. Why did God want to bring all this up? Then we must know who are the Anakims. Why bring them up? The Anakims were mentioned in the book of Numbers. Now, Joshua was present at that time when these Anakims encountered, the, uh, when the people of the children of Israel encountered them before they entered the promised land. So we must know some history, right? You want to know the, stock, the, the impact then? We must know the history. Turn to Numbers chapter 13, please. Number 13, quickly. Numbers chapter 13. Well, to some, this is a famous and a well-known account, but to some it may be new to you or not so clear. Now, we know that the spies, 12 of them, were sent into the promised land. This will be 40 over years before these Anakims were destroyed by Joshua, 40 over years earlier. And 10 of the spies said certain things, Joshua and Caleb. Two of the spies said different things. Now, let us look at chapter 13. They came back from the land, searching and so on. But finally, when... They were about to go in, and they could go in. What did the people say about these Anakims? Look at chapter 13, now verse 31. Verse 31. 
But when the men went, that went up against him said, We be not able to go up against the people. So 40 over years ago. For they are stronger than we. Why? And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in the land are men of great stature. How great? Verse 33. And there we saw the giants. This is the title of today's message. Giants. They say they were giants and the sons of Anak, which come of giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so, and so we were in their sight. Now the people say the Anakims. Here we know the Anakims, they were a breed of people that were giants. Very, very big, very tall. We know how big, how tall? Well, at least from the case of Goliath, depending on what you take as a cubit. Goliath, from this race of people, giants, was at least 9 to 12 feet tall. All right, so you imagine, 9 to 12 feet tall. You imagine all those tall basketball players, not close. Depending 9 to 11, depending what, how you take a cubit, they were huge. And historically, they know that there was such race that existed. They knew. Now, in so much that they say we were as grasshoppers. What happened next? All right? Why this mention? Because Joshua said we can go in. We can go in. But the people would not go in. Now, if you look at chapter 14, verse 8. Chapter 14, verse 8. Now, what was said? It's first in verse 6. And Joshua, verse 6, Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the two of them. Now, they speak in verse 7. They speak. What did they say? Joshua was one of them that said this. Verse 8, if the Lord delight in us, then we will bring us into this land and give it us. And sorry, he will. A land that floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bread for us. The defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. What's the statement? Fear them not. Joshua said this. At the end, then we come back to, oh, you keep a bookmark there, please. We come back to the present where Joshua wrote this. You see, Joshua remembered what he said to the people. Now the battle is over. He wanted to make sure at the chronicling of the battle, he put these two verses in. He remember, I said those things. God is with us. We just need to not fear and don't rebel against God. We will take them. They will be like bread to us. Bread means you eat every day. Piece of cake. You don't even eat cakes every day, right? Bread you eat every day. No problem. No problem. Why was this mentioned? Because the people would not step out by faith and take the land 40 over years ago. But now when we look at chapter 11, at that time, came Joshua. Just a simple phrase. Now, these lands that are mentioned, Hebron, um, Debir, and so on, these are places that have been mentioned earlier. You must remember that in chapters um, 12, uh, 10, for example. Mentioned earlier. These are places that they fought with earlier on. But Joshua, at the end of the chronicle, want to mention it now. It is like that. They were just going from places to places to places, did war, well, Anakim's just another place. Where they live, just another place. Just another enemy. Anakim's, that's all. But 40 over years ago, the people feared them so much that they abandoned mission. So Joshua wanted to say, look, they are just along the way. These places, Hebron, Deborah, for, uh, Hebron, Debir, for example, they were just along the way as we were battling. And we took these Anakim's and destroyed their cities. Joshua mentioned this to make sure that the future generations who have this record, because by now, they have the record of the book of Numbers, okay? 
may not be called numbers, but they have that record written by Moses. They had those written words that we read earlier on. And Joshua wanted to make sure that this part is also recorded for the future generation. Anakims, your forefathers were afraid. Anakims in our time, just along the way. And we demolish them like nothing. It's to make sure the future generation do not forget. To make sure the future generation remember the lessons. We are the future generations. What are we to learn? Giants. Giants. Now, what was the real problem at that time? Like I say, if the intent is for us to learn, then we must look at what happened at that time. And don't do that. And then look at now what they did and learn. What should we do? Turn back to Numbers, turn back to Numbers chapter 13. Now, if I were to ask you, what was the real problem? I think you would know. It's easy for us at hindsight, right, to say, what was the problem? Well, the problem in Numbers um, 13 is very clear. Numbers 13, they saw, verse 33, they saw, they saw, huh? please remember that. Did they encounter them? Did they fight them? No, they just saw. They saw the Anakims. And then they said, they are giants, we are grasshoppers. And the real problem was fear, as it was mentioned. Joshua identified the problem. This record teaches us the issue is found in verse uh, chapter, chapter uh, 14. Joshua just highlighted and brought it out into the open. Verse 9, for chapter 14, verse 9. Neither fear. Don't, sorry, the problem is don't rebel, don't fear. You've been given a commandment to obey. Don't go against God's commandment. That is one of the problems. But why did they want to go against the commandment? Fear. And he would mention it twice. Neither fear the people of the land. Don't fear the giants. And he said again, the problem with us is fear. Don't fear. They are like bread for us. He finishes verse 9 by saying, fear the giants not. Fear was the problem. Was the problem the giants? Joshua went to the point. And when he recorded this other, this present day um, detail to us, that is what he wanted to address. That is what he wanted to remind the people. They were, they saw and they were afraid. But look at what happened. During the record of the battles, when this, for example, Hebron was mentioned, you, in chapter, um, chapter 10 of Joshua, when Hebron was mentioned and where the Anakims lived, the miracles were over, the sun stopping and all that over. This was just normal battle. Joshua wanted them to know they dare not cross because of the giants, but I want you to know when we were fighting the giants, there were no miracles. We just bulldozed them along the way. That's all. Now, what must we learn from this account? First of all, let's learn the consequences. The consequences. Now, actually, before that, let's learn about, we should learn what are giants first, all right? Giants. What are giants? The title today is Giants. Now, as we will look at this passage, we will see that when they saw, they saw that the barrier, the great difficulty for us, the one thing that is in their eyes, impossible to overcome are the giants, the Anakims. Now, over the last um, few weeks, we've been learning, we've been learning that the problems of life will continue to increase, correct? That's one thing we learn in all these battles. 
The second thing we learned was in the problems of life, in increasing problems of life, we need to move forward. And we do not know how long. Remember, Joshua made war with them a long time. So one thing we have learned thus far is the amount of problem. We learned the other thing is the length of time of facing problems in life. But there is one thing that we must learn is on top of all that, there can be giants that we face. What is the thing about giants? It means this. There are times in our life we can bear with a lot of problems. And we even know that there will be more. We can even bear with, I do not know when this will end, but I'm willing to just keep going on. But you know, there can be along the way, just like them when they're fighting, you will meet giants, meaning to say, you will meet people or situations that are your giants, where despite bearing a lot, despite willing to bear for a long time, but now this giant is, I cannot. I cannot continue. You see the children of Israel, as they were going through the wilderness. In fact, before that, they went through a lot. They went through suffering in Egypt. God delivered them with miracles. And in the wilderness, life was not easy. As they were traveling to, to Kadesh Barnea to cross over, it was not easy. It was a difficult time. And there were also people that wanted to attack them. And many problems. They bore with that. Yes, they did murmur, but they still continued to follow Moses and they marched on. How long? When? When? They always ask, when? When? You know, like you drive and children say, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there? So they also wonder how long more. But they continued to move with Moses. They had much problem. They had a long time. But when they reached this problem of giants, what happened? You look at, you look at chapter um, 14 of Numbers. Now, what did they do? After a long journey, bearing a lot for a long time, giants did a different thing to them. What did giants do to them? Look at um, verse 3. And where, chapter, Numbers chapter 14, verse 3. And wherefore had the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, and our wives and our children should be prey? Were it better for us to return into Egypt? Now, then this is what they do. You see, all the while they've been journeying, going on, bearing with all those things, but this time is different. What does giant do to them? Verse 4. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. They Giants caused them to give up. Giants caused them to have such fear that they say, this time, this is where it ends. Same for us. Now, what are giants? Giants are things that will cause you in your walk. You've been bearing for a long time and you're willing to bear much. But there, when you face your giant, that is the one thing. There is those things in your life Persons or situations, obstacles, barriers where you say, I give up. I'm not going to continue. This is where I turn back. This is where I throw the towel in. In what? Giants are what make you stop and say, I'm stopping here. Worse, we are going back. But because of what? Giants, well, put it the other way. They were supposed to cross and enter the land to do God's will. That is why Joshua said, do not rebel. Meaning to say, you must obey God. Do not rebel against God's commandments. Obey Him. Do His will. Neither be afraid. Giants are what make you stop and want to turn back. Giants are those things that cause you to now say, I won't obey God. 
Those are the things that say, I cannot obey God further. This is as far as I go in my personal walk. This is as far as I go with, with service in church. This is as far as I go with bringing up my child. This is as far as I go in my obedience and consecration to God. This is as far because this giant that I see is too difficult for me to continue to obey God. When we do not continue because of giants, we are rebelling against God. We are not obeying Him. So giants are that which cause us to turn away from the will of God, the purpose of God in your life. Giants are what stands between you and doing God's will. Giant is what stands between you and doing that which is right and commanded by God. You must remember that. I do not know what giants you will come to face, just like they did not know. They just journeyed, 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 followed, 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 difficult, difficult for a long time. To them at least. And then they hit giants. You will hit yours. What else about giants that we learn from here? Now, you will notice that God says they saw. I mentioned that. They haven't encountered. They haven't done battle with them. Joshua did battle with them. But 40 years or 40 over years ago, that generation, they say, just seeing is enough to frighten us. Giants are things which you may not encounter yet. You do not even, you have not even needed to engage in that situation or with that person yet but just the thought of it just the sight of those things whatever it may be just the very thought of that situation that person that obstacle you already say there's some abort mission that is what giants are don't think that giants are those that you engage and fight it can be just the very thought and sight of it. What else about giants? Giants are what hinders you in your progress of your Christian walk and to do God's purpose on earth. They were going on not very obedient people, but they were going on. They reached Kadesh Baniya. But because of giants, they stopped. I don't know about you. Are there things that you are beginning, are there things that are beginning to happen in your life or you haven't even seen yet? And you say, when the time comes, I think this is as far as I go with God. You see, their mission was not to just, just travel in the wilderness. Their purpose, being brought out of Egypt, just like your purpose of being saved, is not just being delivered from hell. Their purpose was to enter the promised land, progress. You see, it's not just about stopping. It is about progress. We learned last week. Go labor on. Lots of problems, long time, don't know where is the end of the tunnel. But progress, keep marching on. But giants will cause you not to progress. Giants are things that are things that want you to stay status quo. Status quo. What is status quo? Status quo means, let's just stay here. Maybe you feel that, I've been a Christian for a long time, you know, pastor. It was not easy when I was young. I served the Lord very hard. But you know, now I'm meeting certain giants in my life. Or young people. Pastor, I've been very obedient in many things. And I suffered many things. 
I'm willing to give up many things. But pastor, you know, this thing, this person, this desire, this situation, pastor, you've got to understand, it's impossible for me. What will happen? Okay, I, I think this is enough for my family. This is enough for my walk with you. Um, I think I'll just stay at this level of my Christian walk. But no one thing. Giants, giants do not make you not only not move forward, giants make you go backwards. You notice their thinking is this. These are frightening people. What did they say? Let us make another captain. Forget about Moses. What did he say? Return to Egypt. Giants drive you back to your old life. You will not stay still. Those of you, if you know that you're facing things, whether it's, I have a new baby. My kid is still young. My kids are teenagers. Whatever it is, I have been plodding on. Don't be surprised that at that time, at that same time of your battles, you are going to meet your giant. Have you heard from your giant recently? <laughs> Maybe there are some giants in your life. Have you heard from your giant recently? What is your giant saying to you? What do you see? What's your view of your giant? All of us will face our very own. For the children of Israel at the time, that is what keeps them from progressing. Now, sometimes when we see giants, we must remember this. A giant's will. I just said, these were real, real, very big stature people. All right? They find bones of them. They are real. A giant's will. Real. A giant strong. They were strong. In fact, it is understood that these rays are often hired by um, kings at that time as mercenaries to protect them. Just the sight of them, the enemies don't want to go near them. And they're very strong. Goliath, for an example. Are they real? Are they strong? Are they frightening? It's yes to all of them. I do not belittle the giants that are in your life that you may face, whether as a family person, whether as a single, whether as an individual, whether as a young person, as a student. I do not belittle them. They are real. But the question is how to respond to them. We study that at the end. Now, so we know all this, but still, but still, what else must we learn in this punch, punchline of Joshua? We must learn about the consequences, the consequences of fearing giants. What do I mean by that? Now, you know that in the present record, what were the consequences of Joshua just plodding on, continuing with many problems, a long war, along the way met giants and just went on without fear? What were the consequences for Joshua? The record to be highlighted at the end doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that they only fought the Anakims at the end because these places mentioned, they were in between the war. The record is to remind us, even as we face our giant, if we overcome them, how to overcome them? We learn at the end, God willing. If we overcome them, the, the situation is very, very different day and night different you see he recorded at the end is to show us you see all this battle one after another one after another one after another we finished it but let me also let you know anakims remember giants remember giants your fathers talk about these giants they did not come in yeah i know they're in the grave all right but they did not come in but for us we won 
battle after battle after battle. What are the consequences of not fearing giants? What are the consequences of fearing giants? You see, he wrote this at the end to say they were nothing, really. We just plowed through them along the way. I didn't even mention it before that, but let me mention it to you now. We just plowed along the way, that's all. By the way, but what were the consequences of the previous generation that feared giants? See, Joshua was there. When he wrote this, this is so clear in his heart. They said this. Now, please look at chapter 14. So learn what happens when we fear giants. The negative consequences as well. Look at chapter 14. Now, they told Joshua, let us turn back. Let us turn back. Verse 10, but all the congregation, verse, chapter 14, verse 10, but all the congregation bade stone them with stones. Bade stone them with stones. They were so angry. They said, don't, don't, don't talk about this anymore. You know, one of the consequences of fearing giants, eventually in your heart, you are going to be like them. Maybe you have to make a certain decision, but you know this is your giant. This is something that you feel you cannot overcome. And it's a family abort. Let's abort here. Or child, let's abort here. Or your personal walk. And then there is the reminder. Just like Joshua said, come on, don't fear. Don't fear. God says this, let's just obey, don't rebel. You keep hearing it from your parents. You keep hearing from church. You keep hearing from messages. Some people keep encouraging you. You eventually get fed up. You get angry. Just get rid of this person so that I stop hearing this. These are very dangerous consequences. When we fear, this is how we will change in our heart. I don't hear it anymore. I've made up my mind. We can't overcome. I can't live that life. I will still continue to plod on. I will still continue to endure. But this, not. No go. We will get angry. Now, but we know the most obvious consequence. They ended up being forbidden to enter the promised land. They ended up wandering in the wilderness for almost 40 years. Do you know what that means? Their life, instead of being purposeful, not fear, enter and conquer victory after victory and progress and grow, what happened to them for the 30 over years? Because they feared, would not obey. They had no or rather, their life was meaningless. Their life was meaningless. Just wandering day after day, day through day. A meaningless life. That was what they lived. The people of the children of Israel, Joshua said, all oh, battle after battle after battle, win, 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 conquered, 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 moving into the land, progressing in our work for the Lord, Purposeful, fulfilling his purpose. A life with meaning. Yes, it's that difficult life. Don't underestimate. The battles were difficult. They were long. They were challenging. But it was so meaningful for them compared to wandering, wandering, year after year. Friends, when we meet the giants, Whatever it is, whoever it is, whatever situation it is in your life, if you do not move on and fight by the help of God, meet the giants face on and go on, this is what happened to you. God removed the privilege of service from them. God removed the privilege of fulfilling his purpose on earth. Did they die? No. 
Could they die straight away? Yes. God has shown he could judge the, those who rebel at one time. The earth opened, swallow them up. They were afraid of land that swallow, that eat people up. But they forget God literally opened the land and they saw people swallowed up. But yet, they were thinking of this land. They didn't see the land swallowing people up, but they said, oh, this is a land that eats his people up. Did they die? No. Maybe some of us are actually happy and contented with such a life. Pastor, don't ask me to go further. Don't preach this anymore. Don't ask me to obey this way anymore. There are consequences. Look at them, what they say. Please notice these words. Individuals, parents. Numbers chapter 14. What were their worries about? Verse 3. Our wives will fall by the sword. Our children would be prey. You worry. These giants will cause consequences in my family. My loved ones, don't ask me to do this. Don't ask me to live like that. Don't ask me to progress. I keep emphasizing about this passage. Who did God use to kill the Anakims? Their children. Were the parents present to protect them? No. God says, I will wait till you die. Why did God want to wait till they die? Can't God say, all right, 40 years, you don't go in, all right? You, you can't leave from first year. The rest, let them cross over and let them, God says, oh, no entry. God want to wait till they die. These children will cross themselves. Of course, you know it's not themselves, it's God. Parents know it is not you that protect your child. It is not you. If you're fearful of doing anything, whatever we've learned in parenting yesterday, but you're fearful, please know it is not you that can protect your child at all. They went in as orphans. Parents all died in that sense. But they were the ones that killed the Anakims. But the parents led a wandering life. Sometimes I think that is us. We like that wandering life. I've done so much as a parent. I've done so much as a single. I've lived like that. No, I just live like that. That's it. Cruising, status quo. Please don't ask me to face my giants. You don't face, you won't grow. You won't experience what the other generation experienced. Faith from victory onto victory, the joy. You will know that. Just a meaningless life. Are you alive? Alive. Are, you, are we living day by day? Yes. You see, they still can walk around, watch sunset. I'm sure sunset must be quite beautiful in the desert. Watch sunrise. Eat manna. No duties. Just wait to die. Are you living like that? Just wait, thing for death. In the meantime, enjoy my, my quiet, peaceful life. You see, when we don't want to face giants, we can actually think this is not too bad. But it's a meaningless, purposeless, privileged, withdrawn life. A very sad life. You should rather die meeting your giants than to, have, than to live a meaningless, purposeless life. Young people, when you come out and work, it's the same. Rather suffer than to say, my giants... I'm not going to go further. You will only go backwards. What else did we learn about this? The consequences is, as I mentioned, you think that you have the life that you want. You see, to them, just don't face giants. Come on, let's just not face giants. But we had to leave. You think that you get the life that you want. Maybe every day you really feel, oh, my child is like that, dress them up pretty, you know, send to school, make them clever, and my life is going on. Nice car, nice house. You think that you have the life that you wanted. Oh, those people fighting battles for them, serving God, you know, obeying God, and then life is so difficult. But me, in my little own corner, I'm enjoying my personal life, my single life, or my married life, my family life. 
Avoiding giant does that to us. So sad. Such a life is very sad. Now, what can we do? What should we do then? How to respond? How to respond? The solution. One had a very meaningful life, albeit not easy. The other one, meaningless life, but looked like a peaceful life. How to overcome giants? Well, the problem was fear, right? The problem was fear. Why did they fear? I want to ask you, why did they fear? How to respond? First, face your giants. They were facing them. They were seeing them. They faced them. What's the difference between Joshua and the people back then? The people, uh, Joshua faced the giants and he fought on. The previous generation feared the giants and they fled away. Fight or flee. But notice how God described all this. You see, sometimes you don't want to fight. Ah, oh, I don't want to fight. This, this giant is impossible. Big, strong. I mentioned just now. I do not underestimate the giants in our life can be real, big, strong, difficult. In your eyes, impossible to overcome when you face them. When you're looking at them and it's coming towards you. But I want you to notice how God described it. Now, look at how the people say um, in, verse, in chapter 14 of Numbers. Now, uh, sorry, um, chapter 30. 32 first, huh? 13, 32. He said, Oh, this land eats, eats up its inhabitants, eats up its inhabitants. inhabitants. Chapter 30, uh, verse 33 of chapter 13, grasshoppers, they will squash us, kill us, right? Eat us like grasshoppers, nothing, we are nothing. And then in, um, how did Joshua answer at that time? Now, Joshua said, in chapter 14, verse 9, I mentioned this. For they are bread for us. <laughs> kind of interesting, right? Facing giants and keep talking about being eaten up and eat them up. Eating, eating, eating. Like nothing. They will eat us. No, we will eat them. You know, when it comes to the book of Joshua, in chapter 11, and in verse... Um, in verse 21, all right, in verse 21, Josh, and at that time, Joshua uh, came, Joshua, and cut off, cut off the Anakims. This word cut off is the word where they use when two parties make covenant, and then they will get an animal, they cut the animal, they kill the animal, not only they kill the animal, they must cut up the animal. They cut up the animal for what? This contract is cut by, they will eat the animal. Joshua would use what? Joshua came and cut off. You say they will eat you up. No, you can eat them up. It was a reminder. Now, what is the lesson to learn? You either face them. You think that they will eat you up. You think it will demolish you. That as giants in our mind. But God says, I will remove them like nothing. What do you focus on? So number one, face and fight. By face and fight, I'm very brave. I just keep fighting. No, you will fail. You say, but I thought you said face and fight. The focus of the people 40 years, 40 over years ago, their focus was the giant. They keep focusing on the giants. Joshua always focused on the promises of God. If God is with us, don't fear. If God says he will give us the land, it is ours to take. Ten spies focus on the giant. Two focus on God's promises. How to face these giants in your life so that you will grow, so that you will have a meaningful life moving forward till the day you die, whatever age you may be. Focus on God's promises, not just go face and fight. When you face and fight, 
You must know what to concentrate on. You see, the more, the more you think about giants, the more you look at them and think about the problem, the problem, the problem, you keep talking about the problem. You keep thinking about the problem. The problem becomes bigger and bigger. So the giants become bigger and bigger and bigger to you. To the point you say, I'm turning back. I'm going back. I'm giving up. And please don't preach about this anymore. Don't tell me to deal with this anymore. You see, when this were mentioned, God did not mention miracles. I mentioned this many times. They were just ordinary battle, going by the faith of the Lord. Whatever God promised is already done. Well, my friends, do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? He is the living God and the Savior. He can save you to the uttermost. Do you believe? Those that believe, the promise is as good as done. You see, we believe that we will go to heaven. But when we see our giants, we don't believe that God promised. His promises are true. This is at the end. All the while God says, Joshua, fear not, fear not, fear not. The only way for you not to have fear but to have faith is on God's promises. Whether it is in your family, whether it is being a single, whatever, whether it is serving God, in something, whether it's in something that you know you need to obey. Now, if you face with faith and not flee, you will experience a Christian walk that is very joyful, that no one will know. From faith to faith, from victory to victory, that is how you face giants. Don't try to preserve your life. Don't try to preserve your life. They wanted to preserve life. And I'm not saying in a way where you don't, you don't take care of yourself. But when fear that you suffer, fear that you will lose your life, your family's life, you will see only giants. Now let us rise to sing the closing hymn. 437. In marching mode, onward Christian soldiers. Let's sing with marching mode. 437, 437.